Australia by Imploding Colon, read by Deathlight. Chapter 47 Buckets. It had been nearly a day, but there was still debris left over from the latest engagement with the invading creatures. While all the citizens of Windthrow were busy chatting, haggling, trading, and carrying on with their business. One pony was left to clean up what remained of the mess. Gold Petal sighed as she grabbed several chunks of loose wood and tossed them into a wagon behind her. A splintery pile of junk was formed in the back of the cart. She added to this refuse slowly, lethargically, as if begging for time to slow down around her. She had come upon a large, overturned bucket. Reaching for it, she paused. Gold Plate looked up and gazed across the central courtyard of Winthrow. Across the way, an old mare and son were trotting side by side, carrying saddlebags full of mining wares. They chatted of the local blacksmith, their faces shadowed and serious. A deep breath came out of Gold Petals. She sat back on her haunches, pulled her hood down, and ran a hoof through her short blonde threads. She briefly looked like a pony three times her years and equally as dull. Are those your parents or something? Gold Petals jumped back to her hooves with a gasp. She winced, rolled her eyes, and growled over her shoulder. You really need to stop doing that. I can't help it. Rimbadash hovered down beside her. I think in three dimensions. Nothing against the earth ponies. If the scabs may have turnips, I'm sure they think beyond two dimensions as well. Did you find out anything from your trip to the mine? Only that it's a mine, and it's deep, and there was this weird... She paused, gulped, then said, I met Fulchot there. Funny. Gold turned her flag to the wooden bucket. I thought you went down there to talk to Slatesteed. Well, yeah, I kinda did. And what became of that? He pretty much blew a lot of hot air. I guess it comes in handy way deep in the mines, huh? Rima smirked tiredly into the shadows of the nearby alleyway. So, like, seriously, are those your parents? Hmm. <sighs> Gold Petals picked a few shredded pieces of rope and tossed them into the cart. Rimbadash raised an eyebrow. Well? Yeah. Gold Petals muttered. For what it's worth. Rimba leaned her head curiously to the side. That's a weird thing to say. I thought Earth Ponies were like crazy respectful of their folks and stuff. Aren't all ponies? I never knew my parents. But that's kind of typical for Pegasi. It's hard to make a homestead in the clouds and... <laughs> She winked at Gold Petals playfully. When he can fly, it's a lot easier to get away with one night hovers. Guess that explains a lot about you. Rainbow blinked. What's that supposed to mean? Gold merely paced around the cards. I figured that I don't need a family. I can care for myself. Besides, he needs a bunch of old horses that make you feel bad. Rainbow looked thoughtfully at her. Did you guys have a falling out? That assumes I was anywhere high to fall from to begin with. Gold Petals murmured, then frowned Rainbow Dash's way. Why do souls in this world have to be all bothersome and judgmental of other souls? Because if we bothered and judge ourselves all the time, we'd get bored really quick? Is that all you ever think about? What's boring versus what's exciting? If it helps me to think about it all the time, then sure. Rainbow said. What gets you going on your own road so long? Even if it's just your own road and nobody else's. I'm not like you. That's kind of why I asked the question, don't you think? Gold Petal shifted where she stood. She gazed lonesomely at the two ponies across the courtyard. It's not like they don't know I'm here, that I still work for full shots. I guess a part of me just hopes that someday they'll come to their senses. That they'll accept me for who I am. For what I am. Rimbadash opened her mouth, but paused. She bit her lip briefly, feeling the weight of her saddlebags. And a certain golden delicious fruit that she had left inside there days ago. Clearing her throat, she decided to say, Well, Slaysi doesn't know anything about where the creatures are coming from, and there certainly aren't any of them inside the caves. Heshel didn't seem to want to try to learn more about these monsters. Our poor full shot is caught in the center, too weak and too old to properly do anything as Vesem tells him to. Yeah? Gold Petal squinted at her. Care to tell me something I don't know? Is there any reason to? Rainbow asked, her wings flexing. This town just doesn't know how to pick itself up. I've never been to a place where so many ponies were split on what to do, or where to go that they instead decided to hang out exactly where they are and let the parasites hit the fan. 
It's crazy. It's like ponies are going nowhere. And no matter what I try or do, I don't think there's any hope in this craziness changing. You're leaving? Rimurash blinked at gold petals. She looked at her intently. Her expression was long. You're leaving, aren't you? Look, I didn't say that. But you're thinking it. Gold petals declared. She pointed. You haven't even taken off your saddlebag since you got here. Don't tell me it's as important as the gold pendant around your neck. I just... I just don't think that... Rima found herself at a loss for words. She avoided gold petals' gaze for a while. Excelled deeply and said in a low voice, There's nothing here for me. This town, these ponies, you're all spectacular and stuff. But you're not the ponies I'm loyal to. Then why tell me this? Gold asked sharply, Why'd you come here to see me? Because... Rainbow started as she shifted where she stood. She heard Gold Petal's hoofsteps come closer, and she made an even greater effort to look away. Well, um, you took care of me and stuff. You, you know, after the monsters banged me up good. Gold Petal's at two breaths distance at this point. Is that the only reason? She asked. It was a breathy tone, neither angry nor kind. Rainbow bit her lip. She tilted her head towards Gold Petal slightly, and she moved a single inch, their necks would make contact. Yeah. She eventually said, that's the only reason. The air was quiet for a moment, the mist parted ways and filtered once more. When Gold Petal spoke, it was in a low voice, like she was hanging her head. You know how you said, there's nothing for you here? Rima finally looked up. Yeah. Gold Petals glanced up, her lip quivering. Is there anything for you anywhere, Rainbow Dash? She hesitated responding, but for the moment could become too stretched. There was a rattling noise to their flanks. Rainbow and Gold Petals turned and squinted into the alleyway. What's there? Where did that come from? I... I think it's under that bucket. What bucket? With a shrieking noise, the wooden container exploded. A lone, bruised creature erupted into the air of Winthrow, streaking straight towards Rainbow Dash. 